the uh, 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. <clears throat> before we before we go to the book of Revelation, however, let me let me just read a couple of verses for you from uh, the third chapter of Second Peter. <clears throat> now, don't worry about it; we'll get to Revelation. But uh, let me just uh, kind of lay a little bit of a foundation. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the subject of heaven. Uh, how many of you believe in heaven this morning? Well. And I'm bringing this message this morning because I think many people in talking about heaven and believing in heaven miss the point. And I want to make a point to you this morning. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I hope I can make it clear. <clears throat> Peter said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, listen to what it says, nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Heavenly Father, I pray for holy unction this morning. I pray, Father, that you would speak to these, your people, in a direct and appointed way. And I pray, Lord, that their hearts, they would purpose even now to open their hearts and be receptive to whatever you say to them today. And in the obedience of your will, I pray, Father, that the lost might receive Jesus as their Savior, the Christian might be revived, and, Father, our joy uh, in your service might be renewed. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, <coughs> yes, there is a heaven to be. It is to come. But I don't want you to misunderstand and uh, align yourself in your thoughts with the world as to what this heaven is or how it is to be. Got your attention, didn't I? Some of you are looking at me, you know, kind of like this. What in the world are they talking about? <clears throat> well, the dream of a paradise Uh, where they can continue to be what they've always been, only without the consequences, where everything conforms to their wishes while they remain unchanged in the Christian hope for heaven, the change is in us. What I am saying is that there are many people, most people in fact, and many Christians, under the belief that somehow or another a perfect world would create a perfect person. It's not true. You can improve the environment and uh, it wouldn't be long uh, before uh, the sinner, the ungodly, those who hate God would make a pigsty out of it. And you can take the pig out of the wallow and you can wash him and clean him up and you can tie a blue ribbon around his neck, but the first time you turn him loose, he's going to go and jump right back in the mire. And a leopard cannot change his spots. 
Uh, for we are by sinners, na uh, by nature, we are sinners. We sin because that's what we are. And you can never have a paradise that will create a perfect person. And imperfect people cannot create a perfect world. Y'all understand what I'm saying? There is only one way that you can experience heaven, and that is for God to create that perfect person. How many of you believe that Jesus is capable of making something perfect out of us? Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, he can, and yes, he will. For when he appears in all of his glory and splendor, and we see him as he is, we will be conformed to his image, for we will be transformed into his own glorious likeness in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And then and only then will be, we be prepared for that heaven. Now, I want you, you might think I'm silly this morning, and maybe I am, but I want to read you something. It's a song actually, and I'm not going to try to sing it, but I want to uh, present it to you as though it were a poem. And what this is, uh, it's about a hobo's paradise. And, and I want you to see this as I read this, uh, this song. The hobo remains the same, but he is looking for that perfect world that will conform to him and his ways and his desires. You understand what I'm saying to you now? All right, don't miss anything. Listen to what he says. One evening as the sun went down and the jungle fires were burning, down the track came a hobo hiking. And he said, boys, I'm not turning. I'm headed for a land that's far away, beside the crystal fountains. So come with me and we'll go see the Big Rock Candy Mountains. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains, there's a land that's fair and bright where the handouts grow on trees and you sleep out every night. Where the boxcars all are empty and the sun shines every day and the birds and the bees and the cigarette trees, the lemonade springs where the bluebirds sing in the Big Rock Candy Mountains. <laughs> in the Big Rock Candy Mountains, all the cops have wooden legs, and the bulldogs all have rubber teeth, and the hens lay soft boiled eggs. The farmer's trees are full of fruit, and the barns are full of hay. Oh, I'm bound to go where there ain't no snow, where the rain don't fall and the wind don't blow in the Big Rock Candy Mountain. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains, you never change your socks. And the little streams of alcohol come trickling from the rocks. The brakemans have to tip their hats and the railroad bulls are blind. There's a lake of stew and of whiskey too. You can paddle all around them in a big canoe in the Big Rock Candy Mountain. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains, the jails are made of tin, and you can walk right out again as soon as you are in. There ain't no short handled shovels, no axes, saws, or picks. I'm going to stay where they sleep all day, where they hang the jerk that invented work in the Big Rock Candy Mountain. So I'll see you all this coming fall in the Big Rock Candy Mountain. So you get the point. How many of you got my point there? The point is that in this perfect utopian world that he has visualized, he's still a 
Jehovah. You understand? He hasn't changed a thing. Only the situation and the world has conformed to him. Not him conformed to paradise. But there is something else. I told you, I promised you Revelation 21, didn't I? Well, I want to direct your attention there because it's something I want you to see. <clears throat> John said, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Now I want you to see something about this new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven. It is, it is as a bride adorned for her husband. It is the bride of Christ. Oh. And I want y'all to help me preach this sermon this morning. Will you help me? Mm -hmm. All right. Who is the bride of Christ? The church. The church. And who is and what is the tabernacle of God? The church. The church. Know ye not that ye are the temples of God, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit? Yes, that's what Paul said. That's what Peter said. And so therefore, what I'm saying to you, this new Jerusalem is none other than the church. So what is heaven? Now listen to me now. Heaven is not pie in the sky in the sweet by and by. It is the purity of the born again children of God transformed into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ to marry to him uh, in an impeachable and an unbreakable vow throughout all eternity. Can you say amen to that? It is where we have mortified sin in our flesh. It is when we have repented of our sins and we are now made new creatures in the Lord Jesus Christ, fit to dwell in his perfect presence throughout all eternity. That's what heaven is. And so... When we talk about heaven, we talk about things that are not going to be there. There'll be no more sea, he said, in this heaven of tomorrow. When John penned these words, he was, he was marooned. He had been exiled to the Isle of Patmos, and uh, the thing that separated him from his beloved church at Ephesus was the sea. And there would be no more sea. In other words, from his viewpoint, there would be nothing to separate us from all of those things we love and cherish in the Lord Jesus Christ. Be nothing to separate us from our God. There'd be no more sea. Listen to what else he said that wouldn't be there. There would be no more death. There'll be no more dying there. No one will die in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to say this to you. Before you can get to that point, you must 